Hello everyone and welcome to a quick Godo tutorial on how to create a basic waypoint system. There are lots of situations in games where you might want one of your objects to move according to a specific pattern. A moving platform, an enemy guard patrolling, RTS troops moving around and more. In Godo, setting up a basic looping path like this is actually really easy and today we're gonna see how we can set up a patrol routine using Godo and c -sharp in just a few minutes. We will then improve it slightly to let our avatar mark a little pose when it reaches each waypoint before continuing on its way. For this project, I've prepared a few assets beforehand. First, I made a basic character scene with a body and a head to indicate its current rotation and the red material that is applied on both meshes. Then I created a main scene for this waypoint tutorial with an orthographic camera, a global directional light, and a ground plane displaying a simple grid. And then I instantiated my character in this scene. So at the moment, if I run my game with this current scene set as the default, I just get my avatar in the middle of the screen and nothing else happens. Alright, so it's time to get to it and see how to implement our waypoint system so that our little character moves in between various predetermined positions and loops endlessly. To do this, we're going to use a neat feature of Godot, the path and path follow combo. Basically, the idea is the following. First, we're going to create a path node at the top. Be sure to take a 3D node with a red icon and not the 2D version. Then we'll add a path follow node as its child. Again, be sure to take the 3D version. And finally, we will drag our character instance beneath this path follow node. Now let's select back our path node. We see that at the top of the scene view in the toolbar, we have some new patterns available to define the points of the curve that this path uses. The first button is to drag existing points, the second one allows us to add new points, the third one lets us remove points, and the last button is a quick way to close the shape formed by the current points in the curve. So let's go in Add Mode, switch to a top orthographic view by clicking on the cam orientation gizmo over here, and then draw a basic path with four points like this. I'll also close my circuit by using the Close Curve tool. These four arranged positions will be our waypoints, and the character will move along these four segments and loop when it reaches the last waypoint. And that's where the real magic is gonna happen. If we select our path follow node below the path and look at its properties, we see that it has two interesting ones, the offset and the unit offset. If we change one of the two sliders, we can notice a few things. In the scene view, our avatar automatically moved along the path we just defined, and in the inspector, the other slider moved as well. Basically, the offset and the unit offset are two linked values that describe either in absolute or normalized scales how far along the path the path for the node is. And of course, it also brings all of its children along with it, so our entire sub-hierarchy moves by interpolating between all of our points like this. Okay, we now have a very basic system that allows our character to patrol through all of our waypoints. But at the moment, we have to change the sliders manually, which is not very handy. The next step is therefore to cut up a bit of c -sharp logic to have our player auto-move along the path as time goes by. Now that we have our waypoints and route in place, let's create a script on our character object to have it move automatically on this circuit. I'll open back my character scene and go to the file system doc over here to create a new script asset. Here we will use c -sharp and not the default JD script, so be sure to change the script type to c -sharp when you create the new asset. I'll name it characterpatrol.cs and then drag and drop it onto the root of my character scene. If I open it, I get the basic template c -sharp script Godot provides us with. For now we will remove the comments and define three variables. To begin with, I'll add a reference to my path polar node. I will get it directly from the script, but it is always interesting to cache the references you'll need to reuse frequently in your update loop to improve your script's performance. Then I create two private floats, the total loop time and the current path time. 
Because I want to be able to change and test different values for my total loop time, I'll expose it in the inspector by adding the export attribute in front of it. Now with those variables ready, let's go to our ready function and use the getParentsBuiltIn function to get our character's parent node in the main scene, and more precisely, its path follow component. You can specify the type of component to get on a node by passing in the component type in between wedge signs like this. Then we'll use Kodo's built-in process to run our position update every frame. I'm simply going to increase the current path time by the time delta from the previous frame, so as to accumulate the total game time, and then compute the normalized offset for the path for the node by dividing it by the total loop time. You'll notice that because we don't ever reset it, this value will eventually get above 1, so you might think it will cause some issues, because we use the unit offset. But the cool thing is that if we look back at our path for the node in the main scene, we see it has this loop property enabled, which in short wraps the value back to the right amount if you get outside the range and do some extra laps. Okay, so let's save our character patrol.cs script. What we need to do now is to set up our total loop time so that the character knows how long it has to do a full run of the route. Except that if you select the character node and look at the inspector, you'll see that the variable isn't exposed anywhere, even though we added the export attribute earlier. That's because in its current version, Godot doesn't recompile c -sharp scripts automatically when you save them. So to actually take these changes into account, we need to go down to the MS Build panel, and in the little drop-down here, build the solution. This will force the compilation of our file and show up our parameter in the character node inspector, at the top. For now, we'll put our loop time at 5. If we run this, we see that our avatar now automatically follows the path. It starts at the first waypoint, then walks in a straight line to the next one, and so on and so on until it reaches the last point in our curve, and loops back to the beginning. The only problem is that it doesn't actually turn to look at the next waypoint all the time. Luckily, we can fix this quickly by changing the rotation mode of the path for the node to oriented. And if we restart the game, we see that the character now rotates properly. So there you go, you now have a basic example of a continuous patrol system, where your character loops indefinitely on this path. But what if we could take this one step further and have this little avatar wait at each waypoint, like a god stopping at the end of the corridor? Time to level up and make an advanced version of our logic using timers. In this final part, we're gonna see how to extract the positions of our points on the curve to then check if the character is close to one of them, and have it wait at this location for a little while. Okay, first of all, we're going to add a bit of logic in our ready function, to get the positions of the points in our path curve. Basically, I first get the path node and access its curve 3D object, and then I get the number of points and iterate through them to store these positions in an array. Note, however, that we have to stop one step earlier to avoid taking into account the first position twice, since our path is looping. Then I'll keep track of my current and my next waypoint indices to make it easier to check if I'm near my current target waypoint. In the process, we will check for the current distance between our next waypoint position and our path follow position, since our character's position is controlled by it, and if this distance is small enough, we will increment the indices of the current and next waypoints. We just have to make sure that we wrap it back to zero when we reach the end with a modulo. Note that the distance threshold to check might vary a bit depending on your path and on your speed. So you may have to adapt this in your own project in order for the character to really stop at the waypoint. And at this point, we will also switch a new boolean variable called moving. This variable will determine if we are currently walking along the path or waiting at a waypoint, so we will declare it at the top of the script, set it to true to start with, and then wrap our entire update logic in an if check on this variable. This way, our character will start by moving, and then stop when it reaches the second waypoint. Now, to have it resume the patrol afterwards, we are going to use a timer. 
We can add one as a node in our character scene hierarchy and then reference it in our C -sharp code. This time we will fill our reference using the get node built in, because it is a child of the character root node where our script is hooked. I will leave my timer wait time parameter to one second and then link its timeout signal to a new callback function in my character patrol script named on waypoint timer done. Godot's autofill feature is not yet perfectly optimal for C Sharp, so we'll need to make sure to actually move this function back inside our C Sharp class to avoid errors. And now all we have to do is when we reach a waypoint, start the timer, and when the timer finishes and triggers our callback, set our moving flag back to true. And that's it! Our character now walks and waits periodically whenever it reaches a new waypoint. In just a dozen nodes and 50 lines of c -sharp code, we have implemented a basic patrol system with some advanced features, a tweakable speed and an easy-to-set-up curved-based path, thanks to Godot's path and path for the nodes. So here you are, that's it for today! I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and that you learned a few things for creating a basic patrol system in Godot and c -sharp. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and also, if you're curious about how to make a similar system in Unity and C-Sharp, you can check out this other tutorial I made on that topic. Of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.